Here's how to replace a gas water heater. First, check the labels on your current tank. It will note size and energy specifications, which are helpful when buying a new heater. Also, make sure your venting works with this test. Close all your windows and doors. Turn on all the gas appliances and exhaust fans. Turn up the tank temperature for a few minutes. Then hold an extinguished match near the vent hood. The smoke should pull into the hood. If it blows back, you have a venting problem. Call a pro for help. Next, check your home's water pressure with a pressure gauge on your outdoor spigot. 50 to 60 PSI is ideal. If PSI is higher than 80, you can lower it with a pressure-reducing valve installed after the main water shutoff. An inline pressure gauge and a thermal expansion tank are good to have, too. The expansion tank helps alleviate excess pressure in the lines. You can install an expansion tank easily with push-fit fittings. They simply slide onto the pipe. No soldering needed. And to remove, use the simple removal tool. If you decide to solder, deburr, and clean the pipes, and fittings. Apply soldering paste and assemble. Then heat the fitting and solder. The expansion tank pressure must be the same as the main water pressure. Use a hand air pump to increase the pressure or depress the valve to lower it. To remove the old heater, turn off the gas and use a wrench to disconnect the gas pipe from the control valve. Then detach the venting. Open a faucet on hot and let it run until the water is cool. Now shut off the cold water supply and connect a garden hose to the drain valve. Open the valve and empty the tank into buckets or a drain. Opening a hot water faucet can help the tank drain faster. When the tank is empty, remove the discharge pipe from the temperature and pressure relief valve, also called the T&P relief valve. Disconnect the water supply pipes. If you have to cut them, leave them as long as possible. Then remove the old tank. To install the new tank, set it in a drain pan. Avoid possible flooding by routing to a drain. Install the discharge pipe on the T&P relief valve. This valve opens when temperature and pressure are too high. If you don't have a floor drain, place a bucket under the discharge pipe. It should be no more than six inches above the bucket. Hooking up the water is easy with a flexible hose kit, and it's recommended for earthquake safety. Make sure your kit also has a gas hose. Apply plumber's tape on the threads of the heat trap nipples and attach the hoses. Some areas require dielectric fittings to reduce corrosion between two different metals. Add plumber's tape to the connector body threads. Secure it to the hose, then hold the hose up to the pipe. It should have a little slack. Mark and cut the pipe. Remove the burrs and slide the compression nut onto the pipe. Push the pipe into the fitting and tighten the nut. If required by code, install seismic straps to help prevent earthquake damage. They brace the water tank against the wall to avoid toppling over. Next, remove the aerator from the nearest faucet and open the hot side. Turn on the cold water supply and check your connections for leaks. If everything is good, continue filling the tank. When water runs from the faucet, the tank is full. Let it run for about three minutes to empty air out of the tank. Now secure the venting to the new exhaust hood. To connect the gas line, first make sure the tank's control knob is off. Wrap the threads of the fittings with gas plumber's tape. Insert a flare nut into the control valve and screw the other flare nut into the gas line. Then connect the hose. Turn the gas supply on and use leak detection solution to check for leaks. It will bubble if you have a leak. Tighten the connections if needed. To light the unit, turn the control knob to pilot and press. Then push the igniter button. The light will blink when it's lit. 120 degrees Fahrenheit is the recommended temperature setting. Perform the vent test again and call a pro if there's a problem. It's a good idea to have a carbon monoxide detector near the heater. Finish by installing the air filter. After a few hours, check the discharge pipe. 
A dripping pipe usually means the pressure is too high. Turn it down below 80 PSI. Also, if a faucet stops working after installation, take out the aerator and clean it, and then run hot water to remove loose sediment. Installing a new water heater will give you hot water for many years. Want more great ideas and how-tos? Go to lowes.com slash how-to or click to subscribe. Next, learn how to install a vessel sink.